Hello everyone, first and foremost, I would like to thank Department of Physics, Dr. C.P. Khatiwada Sir of Namchi Government College to provide me such a platform to make a video for partial footprint of my BSc Honours on Physics at 5th semester June to December 2020. And my name is Avinash Khatiwada with roll number 18NS0021 and the topic carries 25 marks instead of my 25 practical marks. Thank you. Now let us start our topic that is reflection and transmission coefficient of electromagnetic wave. As the topic already says reflection and transmission, now we know that when an electromagnetic wave travels from one medium to another, some of its wave gets reflected back and some gets transmitted through the medium. Now let us consider three coordinates that is x, y and z. Now when the electromagnetic wave is traveling towards z axis, we will, have, we, we will get its two components that is electric component and its magnetic component. Now its electric component is towards y axis and it is denoted as Ey and <coughs> the magnetic component is towards x axis which is denoted as Hx. Now at boundary condition z equals to 0, we will get an xy plane. <coughs> where Pz, where Pz is the component of electromagnetic wave. Because it is because it is traveling towards z axis and similarly ey the component its electric component and hx its magnetic component now when an incident wave is traveling from medium one to another let us let the incident wave be ei with its magnetic component hi so it gets reflected that is er and with this magnetic component hr and so it gets transmitted et is the transmitted wave and its magnetic component is HT. Now here we can see <coughs> epsilon 1 which is also known as the permittivity and this eta which is known as intrinsic impedance which is for medium 1 and this E2 and similarly E2 and eta 2 is for medium 2. Now if we talk about medium 1 we can see that the incident wave and the refracted ray waves both are in medium 1 and here we can see that if the electromagnetic wave propagate along z axis we can see its electric component is towards y axis that is ey and its magnetic component is towards x axis that is hx now when this incident wave get reflected back the co its component also gets changed and it will look like this Z axis gets in opposite direction and its x axis gets inward. That is, and y axis doesn't change. That means when the wave gets in reflected back, <coughs> the there will be change in propagation and it will be towards negative direction and the electric field will electric component will get inward and the magnetic component the magnetic component will get inward and then its electric component does not change. Now, at boundary condition when z equals to 0, its tangent component will be ET1 and equals to ET2 and ST1 equals to ST2 where ET1 is the total magnetic com electric component, total electric component at medium 1 and ET2 is the total electric component at medium 2. And similarly, ST1 is the total magnetic component at medium 1 and ST2 is the total magnetic component at medium 2. Now, ET1 equals to EI plus ER. We can see from here that both incident wave and the refracted wave are in medium 1. So ET1 equals to EI plus ER and ET2 equals to ET that is the transmitted wave. Now from equation 1, from equation 1, we can see that EI plus ER equals to ET using ET1 and ET2 in this equation we get that EI plus ER equals to ET. Now if we divide the whole equation by EI, we get 1 plus ER by EI equals to ET by EI. Where ER plus EI equals to gamma, that is the reflection coefficient and ET by EI equals to tau, that is also known as transmission coefficient. And similarly, from equation 2, ST1 equals to HI plus HR and ST2 equals to HD. And if you put this value in equation 2, we get that Hi plus Hr equals to Hd. 
Now we also know that electric field divided by magnetic field is denoted by eta. So if we put this value in value in equation in this above equation, we get that E i by eta i equals minus E r by eta i equals to E t by eta 2. Here is the negative sign of course because the reflection is taking place in opposite direction as I have mentioned earlier. Now, E i minus E r equals to, now solving this equation we get that E i minus E r equals to eta 1 divided by eta 2 into E t divided by E i divided by E i. Now if you divide the whole equation by E i 1 minus E r by E i equals to eta 1 divided by eta 2 into E t by E i where E r by E i equals to gamma as I have already mentioned and E t by E i equals to tau. Now from equation 3 and 4 we get that the reflection coefficient that is gamma which is equals to eta 2 minus eta 1 divided by eta 1 plus eta 2. This equation is also known as reflection coefficient and, and this equation is also known as the transmission coefficient. 